Ladies and gents, and welcome to The Walk On, a brand new show live from Online Darts. We're going to be here all year, giving you a 30 to 45 minute preview of every session of every single PDC televised event. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single minute of our content. Speaking of the channel, main man Phil Bars, not on screen at the minute, but he is doing interviews with all of the winners from this weekend. Make sure you head over and check those out once the show is finished. Not alone tonight. Normally, Jar and Phil would be here for the live lounge, but this is no live lounge. This is the walk on, so we're bringing in the entire team. Dan and Luke, gents, welcome. Uh, Dan, I'll we'll start with you. Uh, debut on the live lounge a couple of weeks ago, back again for more. Um, how's the tournament going for you so far, despite the obvious personal disappointment of your main man falling at the first hurdle? I knew you'd go there straight away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I thought I thought we'll just cruise through. We'll pretend it didn't happen. Like for me, I had the tournament started this morning, didn't it? Really, like that's the tournament started. And in a way, um, I, I sort of feel like that's how, I've, how I feel about the Masters generally. Like I generally often feel um, it's it starts on the Saturday. That that first round is really difficult. It's dead unpredictable. But I th and, and not everybody's there. We don't get to see everybody at that stage. Um, obviously now everyone's in the mix. Tournaments underway. And I, I, I think this morning didn't really bring many surprises. Um, this this afternoon session sort of went. Everything was as I expected, just ticking all the way along. Like it, it's it sort of went the way I. So I think tonight's when we see the big surprises. But I do feel like now everyone's on shore. We've got that first round out the way that the tournament's properly up and running. Yeah, and Luke, you were you joined me for the pod last night, but I think this is the first time we, we've done a a live show with you. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I didn't ask the you. The only one I can think of was the pre world Yeah, because ah uh, yes, I didn't ask you last night, and I probably should have, but. Um, we, we probably spoke a little bit too long yesterday for the pod. What was your game of the day <laughs> yesterday to open up? <laughs> I did like Clayton D'Souza. I thought that had everything. It was close. It was a good little battle. But I think you've got to go for Michael Smith against Adrian Lewis. The finishing in that game was nothing short of phenomenal. We know that that did come up, that that was a record, the best we've ever seen in a best of 11 match. And he still lost. But that, was, that game was top for me. Nice to see Lewis back to some sort of form and, Michael Smith, he's probably ruined his Premier League chances, but it was a hell of a show. Oh, I've lost Luke. Okay, so next up, obviously, we're, we dealt with yesterday. Uh, we will move on to review, a quick review of today's four games of action, um, and then we will look ahead to tonight's um, session. Uh, we're going to start with Cross versus King. We'll, we'll go in game order, keep it nice and simple. Um, we've got a couple of interviews to drop in as we go as well. Um, another good, good performance from Mervyn King, whose odds have been slashed from 50 to 1 to 20 to 1 already for the tournament in an okay part of the draw. I think a lot of us ticked that pre event. Um, Dan, as good as the performance was from Mervyn, though, it was another slow start for Cross out the blocks, wasn't it? Yeah, and I think he's. I, I I don't want to do him a disservice at all because obviously like two days in a row he's, he's he, you know he's won his matches he's put he's played and he's played well, but I I do think he he's you know he hasn't particularly been challenged you know in the, in the last two days yesterday or and, and this afternoon. Um, I think the big the big test is, is going to come in the next round. Um, you know I'm jumping ahead in matches obviously he, but he's playing Aspinall in the next round, and and I think that's where he's. he's He's going to have to start quick, and he's going to have to keep Nathan down um, early. Because I just I don't think he's been tested yet. But you know, momentum 
he's got all, he's got loads of momentum at the minute. He's playing really really well, and 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 all you can I suppose all you can do is win the games you play. So I, I I'm I have quite a good feeling about him. I think he's, I think he's I think he's going to go. Yeah, deep. and Luke, it was back to back ton averages for Mervyn King. I just said his odds are slashed to twenty to one for the title. Not he mentioned it yesterday, and we won't bring this one up yet because we've got even more to talk about from Mervyn King in his post match interviews, but. If, how far does he have to go and can he do it to backdoor his way into the Premier League? I think it's going to require him to win the tournament, to be to be truthful. I, I think the form he's shown in the last two, two events, obviously the Masters and the World Championship, is really, really good and he's really impressed me. But has he done more than the likes of Chisnell had did to make a World semi-final? Probably not. And Chisnell's now sixth in the world. So I think King's going to have to win it. But at the minute, he's shown the sort of form that the, it's definitely possible. Can't rule him out. Yeah, completely agree. Um, bit of drama between the two, um, just despite how perhaps one side of the match was. We'll uh, we'll play you a little clip of Merv's interview now, and then we'll we'll have a little bit of discussion about how much difference that made, if if any, and if that rule perhaps needs a little bit of tinkering. So here's. Here's a little clip we've got of the Mervyn King um, interview for you now. I'm pretty pleased with it right up until um, sort of two legs to go. Um, that's just a shame it had to end that way. But uh, I'm, I'm one of these, if I see something I think is wrong, I, I've, I've, I've got to say something. And I did. And unfortunately, it's against one of my best mates. Um, it wouldn't be any different if that was against somebody else. I, if I say something, I have to call it. And I think I was right in doing what I'd done, even though I left it until after the leg had finished. Um, yeah. Um, just leaves a sour taste in your mouth when something like that happens, unfortunately. What did George say to you at the end if he saw you talking to him? What did he say? Sorry? What did George say to you at the end? Um, I said to him, I said, you're not saying it. He went, well... I'm in front of it, so it happened behind me, so it's hard to see. He went, same as it happened in front of you, and that's hard for you to see. I said, well, from where I was, it, it definitely looked as though he encroached in front of the hockey. I said, um, and if I see it, I've got to say it. I, I'm not one of these people that can just let it go. I'll, if I see something, I have to say it. Um, and it was a case of it. If I'm right, then I stand by what I've done. If I'm wrong, hands up, and I apologise wholeheartedly. Interesting from Merv. Obviously, it, it didn't have a, a massive effect on the outcome of the match, but Cross did take the leg in question. I've, I've seen a couple of pictures on social media where it does look like Cross is in front of where the hockey is, and I'm not sure this is the first time this has happened either, but for me, I don't think this is a fault of the players. I think that there should be an extension of the line, even if it's not raised. There's been talk about a curved hockey for years, about the distance you are from the bullseye, which is technically the throwing line, not from the board. Um, Dan, what did you make of the entire situation? Uh, I, I, so I'll tell you what I, what I do think, you know, I, what I don't, I'm not convinced. I, I, I think we can all, I, I, you know, looking at the photographs, I think we can see that, yeah, he probably, he probably has in cross, as, as the rule stands and as the setup is and, and, and the way things exist in, um, on the stage. I'm not convinced he's done it on purpose, if I'm honest. Like, I think um, it's difficult. The, the environment still is very strange for the players on the stage. You know, without, there's not a crowd that they, they haven't got the, the, the same sort of eye contact and moving around that they normally do. I'm not convinced that it's something that he's done on purpose. I think it's just systematic of, of the, the way things are, the way that the guys are moving around. And, and like, I think you made a really valid point there on, on the way that the setup um, governs, you know, positions and behaviour of people on the stage. I, I think one of the things that, that Merv suffers from is, and, and he says it, he says it over and over again in his interview, that the, his nature is if he if he sees it, he has to say it. Now, I, I'm not sure how much sometimes that that causes himself a distraction where he, you know, he, he's not able to, 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 to let things go, to move on, to talk about it afterwards, to, to consider whether or not something's happened accidentally or on purpose and that he, he, he feels that he has to bring it up and he's got to push with it. Um, I think it's as much a factor from, from his point of view than anything else. 
yeah, Luke, I suppose, fortunately, it, it didn't have the biggest influence on the outcome of the match. Mervyn did still win. He did still average over 100, and he is still into the next round, albeit with perhaps a little bit of a personal relationship to go mend with Rob Cross. He plays Gezi or Colin in the next round. Um, we, we mentioned backdooring it to the Premier League earlier. Can he, can he go all the way? I honestly think he can. I think if, if the form continues, he, he definitely can. I think if, if Clayton does beat then Price, then I think that, that becomes much of an easy game for, for King and he can obviously get through that round. But again, we saw how well Gezi disposed of him at the World Championship. So that could be a really tough little match. But for me, the form that Mervyn showed in the first two rounds is that of a champion. Can he go all the way? 100%. The same sort of, the same sort of form that he showed at the Players' Championship Finals and he went to the final there. And to be honest, should have, should have beaten Van Gerwen. So, yeah. I'm all for it. I'm on the Mervert train. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm getting the big... I'm expanding the fan club. Dan Dawson will be <laughs> very, very happy with me indeed. Um, another player that we're talking about him potentially backdooring into the Premier League. I personally think the year he had last year making two TV finals means that he should have been there anyway. And all right, I am a big fan of the player indeed, but it is James Wade and... A 97 average and 43% on the doubles, Luke. It's exactly what we spoke about last night that Dobie produced. And we said, if he does that again, will it be enough? Dobie didn't produce it. James did. And he uh, dispatched him quite clinically in the end. It was it was a standard weird performance. We see it after every one of his performances, but that was comfortable. He looked dominant again. I think, obviously, we, we heard in his interview, which I don't know if we're going to play that about the, the Barney thing. And I know he doesn't necessarily rate his own chances. But yeah, for me, the form he showed... He's done enough to get into the Premier League. Has the personality, has, has that had some influence potentially? But yeah, all in all, he's not the full package. Form-wise, he's there. Personality could do with some work, I think. PR needs to get himself sorted to get himself in that Premier League again. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on that interview in a minute. I just want to touch on the performance a little bit more to start with. Dan, I'll come to you for this one. I mentioned this a bit with Luke and, and Cam last night on the daily podcast in the Wade seemed to be hitting a lot more one eighties last season and his switching was a lot better. He outscored Dobie four to one in the one eighties today. Um, that extra gear or, or dimension to his game he's added seems to really be keeping him in good stead to avoid the bad games and, and keep going deep and in contention for these tournaments, doesn't it? Absolutely. And, and you know, I'm just, Quick look there at the stats and today, and, and the, you know the average. I mean, you know the average doesn't blow you away. You know, it's good. It's, the average is good, but it's not. It's not stopping traffic. Um, but you're right in that. That's just that level of you know 30, 33 times he's gone over 117, 140 pluses. Um, and it is. It's that. It, it's he seems to be able to um, keep steady at that level. And it's you know he's not having. He's not peaking and troughing. I don't think he seems to. You know he could. That that's the level that his game's at at the moment, but I think he has another gear and he do, he can go up from that. It's it's I think it's going to be for for James at the moment, and certainly about him getting up, winning a tournament. Um, is it's going to take him to time it right? Because we we that he's really consistent at the minute, and I I think I at the moment I really fancy him every time he plays, um, and in every tournament I I just he seems to be in I, in my head he's in the conversation, but. And he need he's got to time right that second gear. I think he's he, when he steps up a level, he can steamroller over someone maybe when he doesn't need to, and then and then he he drops back to his average. When he really needs that extra gear. So I just think he's got to time it right, and I think he he, he could really do something. Boys, you two can come back for every single one of these we do. This is a serious bit of, of <laughs> Merv and Wady loving, and I am here for it. Please get the boys going. I'm sure if you boys pick up one more later on in the show. And you're all over that one too. That's it. We'll write the rest of the boys off. You're here for the rest of the show. Um, <laughs> Luke, you did touch on this one a minute ago. And this is one of the interview clips we are going to play. Along with Chris Mason, who we showed in the live lounge last week. Um, and spoke about that. And that interview is available online. James Wade is another who believes that my favourite Dutchman of all time, Raymond van Barneveld, is possibly in contention for the Premier League. Which is why the announcement has been delayed. We can hear those thoughts from James now. Um, interview with Mac last week, your manager. He said that you play it all down, but you do want that last Premier League spot. Are you thinking about this this week? Yes, I am. You know, um, 
I've lost in two finals. I've lost in a semi-final. In my opinion, I've done more than enough to, to, to get through and qualify. But, you know, obviously I haven't done because I'm not one of um, the, 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 the choice picks. So, you know, I'm, I'm gutted not to be in it. So, Does that frustrate you? Know, I've got a sneaking suspicion. I think Raymond Va Van Bonneville will be in it. So, Does that frustrate you that you've been overlooked? No, not really. Um, of course, it's frustrating, you know, because I want to be in it. But, um, you know, Sky and I think Barry Earn like Raymond Van Barnabas to be in it. You know, that, that, that's that's my honest opinion. Um, but, you know, I'd love to be in it, but, you know, it is what it is. See, no, there won't be many Darts fans that, that feel the same way of the sympathy towards James. But like I said, two finals and a semi-final loss last year outperformed the majority of the field that aren't in the competition. And even some of the ones that are, Rob Cross clinging on because he is world number four, didn't have that great a year. But obviously that is one of the qualification criteria. Do you think the way the players and those around the game are talking about it a lot more now that they think Sky and the PDC are going to try and get Barney into the Premier League is a bit of a... They're setting their stall out now so that there's no surprise, but there may be a little bit of a reaction from Darts fans, Dan. I I do think that the I think there will be a reaction from Darts fans if 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 it goes to Barney. I, I think um one when, when I was talking to somebody the other week about it, I was thinking, well, you know, when you get that, you know, when you when you choose who gets that spot, sometimes the, the, the almost the easy thing to do is to look like who's the easiest to argue against. Like in all honesty, if if James Wade got the spot, it is hard to argue against when you just you know when you justify it in that way. You know, there's two or three other players that that are in the conversation where that it's dead easy to justify it. And whether you agree with it or not, you can sort of think, well, yeah, I see what they're trying to do there. The Barney one, I think a lot of fans will ha will find hard to swallow simply because um, it, it's just the justification is simply is little more than you know nostalgia and 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 potentially you know ticket sales and marketing. And, and I think you know what darts fans love to see from from the PDC and from darts is they want to see the high you know the highest level of competition and and, and you know almost risk rewarding that the players are, are earning something and it, 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 I can see people being really frustrated that for the sake of a marketing tool um, someone's going to miss out on that spot that you could make a really good case for. Completely agree. I'm going to move on a little bit, um, a little bit of segment here. And possibly a matchup with a different Dutchman um, in the next round, Luke. MVG or Johnny Clayton for Wade next. How big a game is that for him to get into the Premier League, obviously? And how winnable is it for James in his current form? You know, again, as Dan said, he's ticking along nicely. The, the form keeps improving. And he, he keeps looking better, obviously. We haven't seen Van Gogh with his new darts, so we'll have to see what that's like tonight. Johnny played well last night. He, he disposed of D'Souza quite comfortably. I still think Van Gogh will come out on top, but yeah, it's going to be, it's about James getting over the line himself. I think in the interview, you've put it perfectly. I think he's actually outperformed. Aspinall, D'Souza, Cross, he's outperformed quite a few that were already in the Premier League argument. So yeah, it would be difficult to argue against him. And if he does go on and make the final of this event, then you'd be hard pushed to say that you couldn't put him in the Premier League. Completely agree. Fingers crossed. Let's hope he gets there or at least Mervyn King, then we can all celebrate and uh, move on. Speaking of moving on, um, we're going to move on to the third game of the day. We've still got two more games to talk about and four more to preview. Um, so we better get a bit of shift on. Um, Aspinall v Mensor up next. We spoke a bit about uh, Mensor yesterday and, and his interview and a couple of bits of the antics. Um, this one, though, 92 and 93 average, bit scrappy. Um, Aspinall never led in the match at all and then won three on the bounce to get over the line. Um, like I just said, it was a bit nitty gritty, um, a bit of a scrap between the players, but um, one that Aspinall will be pleased to get over the line with, get his campaign off to a good start with new darts, Dan. Yeah, and I think um, the way I, the way I, I saw it, and I'll, I'm, I, whoever I've ripped this off, because I, I saw it, someone put it in a tweet, and I really like the phrasing of it. So whoever I've ripped it off, I apologise. But I it just described it as, as winning ugly, like it, you know. It, and that, and I think that 
doing that early in a competition, early in a tournament, um, for a lot of players is is really is really good. They, they, you know, they they he hasn't set the world like he's grinded that out. He's, like you say, he hasn't been ahead. Um, he's he's been chasing and chasing. Um, and he has he's, he's he's won ugly, and it is you know first first time with his new darts like that's one under his belt ticked off like he's got there the 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 you know the confidence level of of just the fact that he's 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 won he's won a match with his new darts so that moving on you know the, the he's, there's there's no jinx there's no issues really with the equipment and I, yeah I think it's gonna I, I, I it sounds like a daft thing to say but I feel better about Nathan's chances in the tournament having come through a game like that early than if he'd have just won. You know, and 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 took you know lost a couple of legs and and steamrolled over somebody because I just think it'll get, it gives him a bit of fight and 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 he knows it. Yeah, say so winning ugly. I quite like the the terminology of Luke. It's it's becoming a bit of a trait of Aspinall to stick in these scrappy games and get over the line in ones that stay a bit close, isn't it? I mean, it's not the worst trait to have, and you'd much rather win a lot more comfortably, but. It's it's a good quality to have in that he can stick in there, fight out till the very end, doesn't give up until the very last dart. I think he was nine seven or nine eight, and Mensor led off the leg with a one eight. He didn't do a lot else. Aspinall stuck in there and still got over the line. So, it, it, like I just said, it's a nice positive trait for Aspinall to have, isn't it? Well, there's a few games now that I can think of against Scott Waits, for example. He was good when he beat Desi, like. He's proved himself over the last couple of months how how far he can push himself when he's under pressure. I talked last night on the podcast about Ian White and how when he steps up towards the double in the last leg, or, or any leg, to be to be frank, he doesn't look that confident. He doesn't actually think he's going to hit it. Whereas Aspinall goes up to that board and is consistently sure of himself that he's going to hit that dot. And he impresses me every time because I've wrote him out of games in the past. But every time he gets up there and gets his chance, he takes it. I mean, Solibit should have won that match. He missed too many match darts. But to say that he shouldn't have. But yeah, again, Aspinall steps up, takes it out. It, it, there's no surprise that he's in the top eight in the world. Completely agree. Um, Mervyn King up next. No, I don't think he is King now because I've contradicted myself. Can't remember who plays next now, the way I've written it up. But um needs to step it up a gear a little bit, doesn't he? If he's going to go it's through king. And, and push on. It is King. I got it wrong with King earlier. He doesn't yeah. play Gezi or Colin. Why on earth have I written that? I don't know. Um, King next for Aspinall. We'll, we'll go there. We'll, we'll carry that on. Needs to step up a level, doesn't he, if he's, if he's going to get over the performances we've seen from Merv so far. Yeah, for sure. Um, he does. He does. And yeah. <laughs> and with that, we will move on to review the final game of today's session. Another one that went a bit close. Another last leg decider. Um, Dave Chisnell getting over the line against Daryl Gurney, 10-9, extending his win record over Gurney at the Masters to three out of three attempts. Um, not a game that's ever going to live massively long in the memory, but another big fish for Gurney. That's the third one of the tournament so far. Um, but it was an interesting dynamic, and it was, it was a good pace of play, and both players just got on with it, didn't they, Luke? Yeah, I, again, Chisnell keeps impressing me. You know, when he does get his game and just focuses on himself, he keeps coming. He keeps pulling results out of the bag. And obviously, against Vaga Van Gogh, he absolutely railroaded them, and it was five 0 But that was a close, close run affair again. And the last two times he has beat Gurney, it's been ten eight and ten eight. So ten nine, he's shown that every time Gurney pushes him, Chisnell still got the measure of him. So yeah, I think he could go deep in this tournament. I back Gurney to win that match, but I think yeah, now Chisnell's impressed me again. A good solid mid nineties average. Dan, I want to talk about the last leg. Gurney leaves 24 after 12 darts. Doesn't get a look in. Chisnell with the throw. Steps up to 74 for the match. Hits a trouble 14. You're like, okay, two in and it. And then he slips into the double seven and finishes the match with a double nine. If you're Gurney, that absolutely breaks you, doesn't it? Yeah, and I, and, and it, I mean, I, I think that, I mean, that's, that's going to do you a nut. At, at, at four all, like that's gonna, you know, that I can see that getting under your skin. Like, you know, it just if that happens at any point in the game, that's gonna get under your skin. For that to happen at, you know, that's happening for the match at nine all. Uh, yeah, I think he's gonna. 
I mean, I, I suppose that there's part of me that thinks that in the form that Chisnell's in, the way that he's been playing, if Chisnell comes to the board with 74, you, you, you're not gonna, you know, you, you're not gonna think you've got a great chance of coming back. You're gonna, you're gonna, you know, most of us, I think, would 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 back Chizzy to take 74 out most of the time. So I, I don't know, in a, but in a way, yeah, I think he's probably gone through a roller coaster there, and he's, I think he's probably gone through the stages of almost putting his darts away and getting them back out again, and then and then and then just as you know, as he starts to get ready, thinking, ah, oh, yeah, we go, it's gone, um, a bit up and down, but um, I don't know, it, it was um, probably the least exciting. I didn't. I, I, the match didn't capture me very much, um, which is odd because it went the distance and it went. We played all the legs out, but I, I, it just. I don't know. It did, I didn't get. I couldn't find myself getting too excited about this one, um, e even with that little bit of drama at the end. You're a brave man if you think Chisnell's checking out a two dark combination to win the match more often than not at nine each with with his. Matches notorious for breaking down under pressure, but we'll, we'll let that one slide a little bit. Luke, back to the Premier League once again. I mean, I know this is the Masters and we should be talking about the Masters, but the significance of this Masters has increased greatly with that temp spot still open. Chisnell, many people's favourite to take that spot. Not the most convincing performance, but again, comes through a close sum of somebody that's been there and done that before. Um, a good win for him that, that keeps him in the hunt, depending on how the rest of the field go, isn't it? With the result for Michael Smith last night, I think that leaves Chisnell right in the box office seat. You know, he's got to be he's got to be looking at himself, thinking if I win at least one more game, unless someone goes and wins the tournament that isn't in the nine, Chisnell should be the man now that that is in the seat and, and is ready to get picked because he is sixth in the world. Obviously, we've said about Wade. But Chisnell's also had the results. The semi-final of the world does outweigh some of some of Wade's performances, and the fact he's that high up on the order of merit. So yeah, Dave's gonna he's gonna back himself, but he really needs to show that he doesn't crumble under pressure because every time we've seen about the Premier League, we've not seen a player who can challenge in the playoffs and potentially win the Premier League. And really, you want a lineup where all ten players can actually go out and win the Premier League. That's that's the ideal lineup. I don't think we've ever seen that yet. Could this be the year, potentially? But that's what we're really looking for. So if you ask me now, do I think Chisholm could win the Premier League? I would say, personally, no. Do I think Wade could win the Premier League? Yeah, on the form he's on, he could do. So, yeah, that would, that would be my two pens on that one. But let's hope Chisholm gets, all, gets it all together and, and, and proves himself in the Masters. I mean, Chisnell is probably the more entertaining player to watch. I completely agree. But the, part of the reason why I've, I've been sticking my neck out on Wadey for so long is that I genuinely believe that of the players not in the Premier League at the minute, you could drop him in there tomorrow and he would make finals day or be in contention for finals night. I'm not convinced that some of the other players that are in discussion without being disrespectful to Chisnell, without being disrespectful to Joe Cullen, I'm not sure that they go in from the very start, settle in as, as soon as they possibly can, hold it together in front of the big crowds and, and are really going to put themselves in and amongst the supposed big four, which is MVG, um, Price, Wright and, and Gary. You've got the reigning champion of Dozer there. I, I just don't see some of the names that we're talking about going straight in as players that can win the tournament. But for me, James is one of those. Um, next up thing, for Chisnell is, is MVG. Just the, the only bit I'd chip on there, on, and man. again, I just think, uh, other than me, I think if we'd have asked, if if we if everyone had just said the same thing last year about Dozer, like I think if we'd have had that conversation, and you know, everyone said like, I, well, you know, should it, 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 has he got a chance of getting through? Other than like me and his missus, like everyone else would have said, I, I think you know, <laughs> there were a lot of people that would have thought nah, not on that, I'm not my, on that. My stage, girlfriend's like, absolutely in love with Glenn Doran. Yeah, that would have been like the three of us, like me, your lass, and Glenn's wife. Right, we like the three of us would have said like, yeah, he's gonna win, he's got it. Like everyone else would have said like, no, he's got. Like we know the reason he's in there. Like he's gonna get a seat. You know, he'll get his turn. He'll have a go at that. And that. And I. And I. And I you know, I don't think that much of the darts community, fans, PDC. I don't think anyone expected Glenn to 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 win it. Um. So I do think there is a bit of that in the Premier League, and that there, there is some precedent for somebody who nobody expects to win. To to now, or there wasn't previously, but now now we've got a bit of precedent where like someone can do that. Someone can just turn turn up on those Thursday nights and like 
they might bomb three other tournaments that happen around it, but they but they can turn up on the Thursday and they win that match and they've all of a sudden they've won the Premier League. Completely agree. Right, we're going to move on to preview tonight's action. Uh, we're going to go in game order once again. How on earth this game is first on the billing is absolutely beyond me because this could be absolute box office. It's Gary Anderson versus E. Lewis. Um, we know the history between these two. They've met in, in two world finals. They both won their second world title by defeating the other player. Um, Luke, start with you first. Adrian Lewis last night looked not 100% the old Lewis, but there were definitely more signs than we've seen recently that he's fit, he's fighting, and he could be on his way back to deliver something like the level that saw him pick up two more titles. Well, I don't know about fit going off what his COVID interview is like, but definitely fluent. And that's that's what, what I really wanted to see. I really wanted to see him back, how he used to throw, because the action is the best to watch, I, I think, in the PDT. When you actually look at Phil Taylor, back when he used to play like Phil Taylor in the Grand Slam 2013, remembering back to that, the action was so smooth. He did look back to his best, almost. Can he beat Gary Anderson? Well, I don't think Gary Anderson's on full tilt yet. The World Championship final, that wasn't Gary Anderson that won the Worlds twice in a row. It wasn't the same man that we've seen before. So Lewis has definitely got a shout today. And if he if he does come up and can get even to 5-5 five, five at the second break, then yeah, I think Adrian Lewis is going to have every chance of winning that match. He did look confident. Michael Smith threw everything yeah. at him, but he was still there or thereabouts. Obviously, he got one match. So yeah, I fancy Lewis's chances. Completely agree. You mentioned it there. I was going to bring it in a little bit later. But as, as you did mention it, we're going to bring it in now and we'll show you a clip of that one. Um, like you said, Lewis is a player who did battle with COVID as well, along with Duzza, and it clearly took his toll on him a lot more than we expected when it first happened. Obviously, we, it wasn't very well documented or, or that sort of thing. And Dan, for me, Lewis is one of those that can't seem or, or doesn't seem to have got a break at any point in the last 18 months every time he needs a run or a chance to kick on I know it's sport I know that's what happens and I know I've said this about Ratajski and a few others before but he never seems to get a nice draw does he does Lewis and it seems to be kicking the man whilst he's down as he's attempting this this big push on and come back up doesn't it yeah, it, it 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 does, and I um, you know, I, I made a full statement on that when I with you, I think on the on the, on the live lounge a couple of weeks ago, and I said the only the only player that will lose more places this year in the standings than than Adrian Lewis will be Rob Cross, and I and I and 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 I, and I support I, when I when I watched Eddie yesterday, um, I thought he's going to make a clan out of me, like he's, he's he he could make a he could make a fool out of me, and, and he and the, you can you can see that there's you know that the, the, the I suppose. We know he's always got the potential. He's always got the ability, and the ability, and that action, like Luke says, there is he's got it, and it's there. It, it's it's whether he can do it day in, day out, week in, week out, and and he, you know he we, he has had the, the um he has had the COVID thing, and and I suppose that maybe that's maybe maybe it's delayed him a little bit, and maybe he's going to keep on a bit of a trajectory and keeping that forward. Really interested, I think tonight um, to see him with with Gary, who's. Um, it's what it is. We we know there are there are probably five or six players um, who who we know in the standings wise and on the last couple of years performances are, haven't haven't met their potential. You know they have they haven't done what what we all know they're very capable of doing. And I think what's most interesting about this match tonight is that first game is they're both like they are two players that I think we would all agree could potentially be on a trajectory to have an unbelievable year. And I do, and I think that the, a game like this could be the making of one of them. In that, it'll, it'll, that one of them will just gain that momentum um, early, you know, early in, in the season, um, taking out a, you know, taking out someone who's who's on a similar path in theory in wanting to, you know, regain the the the, the heights they've met before. So I think it's a really really interesting game that. Completely agree. So like I said, let, let's hear from Amy Lewis, and then we'll we'll have a quick chat about. Gander, shall we? So here is the clip we've got of the Lewis interview for you. Hey, it wasn't no. I, I tell you what happened, right, Jamie. I tell you the very truth now. 
I've turned up to the, the, the Grand Prix. Um, I had no symptoms. I, I didn't have a cough all the way through. You know, I, I never experienced that. And then when Graham's not, Graham Ferris knocked on my door, the tournament director, and said, you, you've tested positive. I'm thinking, no, no chance here. And uh, yeah. I thought, well, I must be, you know, I've, I've tested positive. I've gone back to back home. Um, two days after that, I started having uh, a loss of a sense of taste and my smile and everything else. I was thinking, oh, my goodness, you know, I'm thinking, what's going on here? But honestly, to God, uh, I don't think I've ever felt so ill after that. I think um, it's took all my energy. Even now, if I'm on a, up a set of stairs, I feel out of breath. When I was doing the full size and pure workout before that, I can't even do that now, which is annoying me. Because that's what I want to do, you know what I mean? I want to get fit. So that is, that's really annoying me. Obviously, a frustrated Lewis of, of the effect that the virus t- took on him and his attempt to get in better physical shape. Someone who has been through that, though, has, has got himself in better physical shape, albeit before his knee completely blew up on him last year, is his opponent, is, is Gary Anderson. Um Luke, I'll come to you. He's practicing with Ryan Searle now. That could be a real big move for Gary for this year, now that he's stated how serious he is about the sport for the next couple of years and, and how committed he is to pushing on and getting back to the level he was at. Because he's notoriously one of those that lacks motivation and won't practice that much. And as long as Ryan's there nagging him, going, come on, we agreed to this, we're going to do this, we're going to keep going, Ryan Searle could be the most hated man in the PDC by the end of the year, if it unlocks Gary Anderson once again. Well, I'm sure we remember back in the world a few years ago when Sill did do that and it unlocked the best of Anderson when he was 3-1 down and Anderson came back to beat him. So yeah, I think Ryan Sill turning and with him is going to be really good. And I think it's going to bring both the games up because I think Sill can average consistent hundreds and can get himself in the top 16. So it benefits both players massively. Anderson, he needs a consistent practice schedule. He needs to get back to where he was three about three or four years ago, back when he was at the top of the world. But I think it's going to happen. I do genuinely think it's going to happen. Obviously, some of the interviews we've seen in recent recent times, he's, he's seen a little bit sick of the game. He didn't look that interested. But signing a new contract, he, he's looking ready. And and this is obviously a, a dedicated practice schedule. He's dedicated to, to practicing with Ryan Self for the next few years. So hopefully, that that's it. We've got Anderson back and we've got him back to firing at all cylinders. Completely agree. Right, match tonight. First time that Lewis would have played to 10 in a, in a while, I think. His, last night was his first televised win in 191 days. So that screams first to sixes for me. Um, one name each, boys. Who wins tonight? Dan. Gary Anderson. Luke. Gary Anderson. Clean sweep from us here on the walk-on. I haven't really got a choice after I bailed on MVG to win the tournament and latched onto Gary for dear life, so please don't let me down. But I don't think any of us would be upset if we saw a resurgent Lewis deliver a performance for the ages and possibly kick on, would we? So really looking forward to this game. Can't believe it's on first, but that should be a belter. Game number two of the evening and the recently dethroned world champion, but the reigning Masters champion, Peter Wright, takes on Simon Whitlock. Um, A lot of talk about Simon's equipment, as always, as there always is when he goes and trashes the boards like he does. Um, Your guess is as good as mine, Dan, though, on, on what darts Peter Wright will use tonight and therefore if he'll turn up or not. I think he should just set the cat really amongst the pigeons and use a pair of Simon Whitlock. Or use a set of Simon Whitlocks. <laughs> <laughs> what, you st- think he should spend an entire year pod- just going and playing with the opponent's darts and playing ultimate mind games and going, look, I'm better than you with your own equipment? Yeah, I think actually that, that, that's. I think that, that Peter Wright should dedicate a year just playing with his opponent's darts. Yeah. Imagine the state of the boards when he plays Simon Whitlock. Two people throwing those things. <laughs> That'll be mental. Luke, oh, just be melting he's done down a bit of talking in the build-up. <laughs> he's done a bit of talking in the build-up. But like we just said about playing mind games and picking up your opponent's darts, I'm surprised he hasn't picked up Michael Van Gerwen's darts in the past because he's done a lot of talking about Michael again, despite the fact they've both got 
the need to to go and attack Gerwin Price almost. Um, he did it before the world, and he did it a lot last year. Will it come back to bite him once again? And should he just be focusing on getting the most out of his performances and settling on a piece of equipment for the rest of the year? Well, I was just yeah. about to say that, given that how he didn't rate Michael's chances at the World Championship, I'm not surprised he's not using his equipment, but he really needs to focus on his own game. It did bite him at the World Championship, so what, what is the point? What is he getting out of that? Van Gerwen's already won three world titles. If you're going to get in someone someone's head, then go for one of the weaker players who you know hasn't actually crossed the line yet. Van Gerwen's been there, he's done that, and he won near enough every tournament the race, so I think playing mind games with Van Gerwen is a dangerous game, the same as it was with Taylor many years ago. And Wright needs to focus on his own battles. He needs to start winning tournaments again. He does. He's got a difficult Whitlock up next. I mean, he sort of unlocked his game and, and kept himself in contention and in and around the top 20 in the world with those, ultimately, those victories over Van Gerwen last year. That seemed to be the hood off his back. But for me, his issue has been backing that up. Another tough task in Peter Wright tonight, because... Let's be honest, unless he throws absolute drops and misses loads of doubles, it, it, it's going to be a, a good encounter. Um, we haven't really mentioned his name a lot for the Premier League, but he is one that's been on the cusp before and perhaps missed out, unfortunately, and been the one to be left out. He's another one that another win here could possibly see him sneak in, Dan, but does he have the game to, to get over Peter Wright tonight? Does it, can he back up yesterday's performance? I mean, he's definitely got the game. He's got, he's got, he's got the ability to do it. it. It's again, I think with Simon, and you, and, and you hit the nail right on the head in that. You know, he's I, I, I personally just as a, just as a, as a fan and as, and as someone who likes going to live darts and big events, I, I'd love to see him in the Premier League. I just think he's good value for. I think he's, he's good value for 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 entertainment. I think he smashes one eighties for fun, and there's nothing better. You know, there's nothing better in arena darts. And someone who could just hammer 180s—it's—it's it's, it's, it's amazing, and and but I—I I, I just don't know. I'd I'd like to see him, and I think he's got to win the tournament to get a look in, um, and he's got that that side of the draw. I think is really tough. I think he's gonna, you know, if he get if he if he does get past Peter, which he could do, there's no there's no game that's really like he, there's no gimmies in there. There's no game I think that's easier than Peter. You know, he's he's, he's more than likely gonna bump really quickly and uh, but he's gonna meet Chisnell first and foremost, and he's probably gonna do, he's gonna get you know Van Gerwen or James Wade more most likely. Um, and they're they're the stuff that he's gonna have to try and grind out and get through before really anyone's gonna justify him in that Premier League conversation. Completely agree. Right. Same again, boys. One name who wins this one. Luke, you first. Simon Whitlock. Oh, Dan. Snake bite. Two, one, two. <laughs> snake bite from the team on the way <laughs> tonight. I'm going to back my man, obviously, because because that went so well for me last <laughs> year. <laughs> Um, next up, let's do game number three, Price versus Cullen. Um, interesting one, this one, as it will be the first time that Gerwin Price is announced by John McDonald as the reigning world champion. Dan, how will he handle that pressure? Uh, I, I, I think in this scenario, absolutely fine. I think, I think Gezi benefits in that. <sighs> I think he benefits now more than ever from from a crowd not being there. I think up until this point, I think he's been one of the players that's really missed a crowd. I know that sounds ridiculous because he's won the world title, but like I think you know he likes the crowd there. He likes that atmosphere. He like you know he likes that that sporting competition. He likes to go to battle and he likes that noise and 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 and, and, and rowdiness. Um, but I think in this environment where he's going into, where that pressure is going to be lumped on so much more, and he is the world number one and he is the world champion, and the expectation level's gone up. I think certainly in the early part of this year, as he settles into that, because he's gonna, you know, he's gonna be announced as the world champion for at least a year, um, and I think as he settles into that, the lack of a crowd might just ease that pressure off a little bit, um, and and I, and I think it will, will work to his advantage certainly in the early stages. Yeah, Luke, he's another one that's using the Masters to, as a lot of players do traditionally, to tinker about with his equipment. We'll, we'll load up a picture of his darts over us in a second, but 
an interesting time as you've just become world champion to start tinkering around with a setup that obviously worked so well for him last year. Yeah, I'm, I don't mind players tinkering around with a setup if they're trying to find perfection, but when you just win a world title, I don't, I can never ever support that. I know you're always striving for perfection, but what more do you want? You've won a world title with them, Dart. Stick with them, stick to what you know. I, I can understand the, the, the constant strive, but yeah, I don't agree with it. We'll have to see how he performs. To be honest, people have said this before. You can put any set of darts in these players' hands and they'll still average well. It, we're talking minor, minor differences. Will it help him psychologically, potentially? But I, I would have stuck with what I knew. I think Wright should have done the same. And, and I think Phil and a lot of the boys that we've spoken to in the past will agree as well. The best setup we saw Peter Wright throw was the setup that he went on to win a world title with. And the first thing he did was bin him off after two rounds of the Masters and start throwing something else. So I, I know this is just in the event that the players do go changing out. We, we've just said that. But I find it interesting that Gezi is one of those who, not only has he changed the grip on those, but he's, it looks like he's slightly changed the shape. I mean, we could see a lot more of that picture than we could of Nathan Aspinall's that we had as a preview earlier. Um, that was just the top end of the barrel hidden by his hand. But yeah, an interesting time to change. Um his opponent, though, made the change a little bit earlier last season, and it, he's just gone from strength to strength, really, hasn't he, in Joe Cullen, Dan? He, he, he looks very, very settled with the darts, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm becoming more... I, I think with every tournament, even when he doesn't... Even even the one, even if he doesn't have a, a deep run, I'm becoming more and more of a Joe Cullen fan. I just find him great to watch. I think he's... Um, I think he's a, I mean, he's a great player. I think he makes for exciting matches. I think sometimes because he's a bit because his form can go up and down a bit, and he does t he can peak and trough in the same game um, that it makes it, it makes him an exciting player. But you know, but in answer to your question, I think he, he seems really settled at the minute. He see he certainly seems settled with his new darts. They seem to transition really really well. Um, you know, he's obviously got the backing. Um, you know, you can just see on social media that you know he's he's getting he's he's getting extra promotion. You know, the, the deal's working well for him, isn't it? You know, just even just from a marketing point of view. Um, and I, and I, I'd really like to see him do something. You know, I I think he's got he's got the game to do a bit. I, I think he he needs to get. I'd love to see him get to a fine. I'd love to see. And you know, I just I just I'm becoming a bigger and bigger fan of him as time goes on. Yeah, I mean, we're going we're gonna to hear from him in a second. He's a player who, Luke, we spoke about this last night, about is there a, a little bit of mental fragility in Joe Collin? He was talking about not bottling it uh, against Marco Van Gerwen. He then was talking about how he was defending a little bit against, um, who did he play last night when they started coming back at him? Bunting, Stephen Bunting. Um but this is a little bit different from Joe Cullen. He's, he's sort of gone on the offensive. Let, let's take a listen and we'll have a little bit of a chat about it. Is Joe Cullen talking about who he thinks is still the best player in the world? Probably shouldn't say it, but I'd, I still see Van Gerwen as number one. He, he, if, if, if you're going to play somebody, I think, he, I think he's the number one player and I think he's the most difficult to beat. But, you know, we'll... I might be eating my worst tomorrow night when he does me 10 too, but you know, you never know. I mean, Joe said it there and he might very well be eating his words and he probably shouldn't have said it. And we, we see this a lot from players in the past. It's nice that they're not robots, especially for us who cover it from a media aspect, but interesting time for him to decide that he still sees the green machine as a bigger threat and the better player than the world number one. Do you think he's trying to capitalise on the fact that Gezi's going to be walking out with the pressure of being the world champion on his shoulders first time he's announced like that and, and try and catch him a little bit cold, Luke? You know, I alluded to it not long ago, but when you haven't won a major title to be going and trying to play mind games with a world champion is very brave. I appreciate the effort and yeah, as you say, it makes the media side really interesting, but for me, should he have been saying that? Oh, he's put himself in a little bit of trouble if if Gezi does absolutely floor him. But let's let's not make out that that was a ridiculous opinion because MVG is still the best player in the world. He is still the three-time world champion. So the most most of that is anyone in this competition. So 
let's not beat you around the bush. He's not saying something out of line. It is probably true. Easy for you to say when you haven't got to go and play him later on this evening and get potentially <laughs> kicked by him. Um, we're, we're, we're getting close to time, so we're going to have to move this one on. One name again, boys. Who yeah. comes through this one? Dan, first for you. Oh, Colin. Oh, Luke. Over oh, going price. I am, for the second time, following Dan. I think the best time to get Gezi will brave. be this game. Catching Very brave. Cold. If he gets into the tournament, then he's very difficult to beat, as we've said previously. But his finishing in the semi-final and the final of the World Championship was some of the best finishing we I've ever seen. It, it was superb. The double tens in the semi, the tops in the final was absolutely outrageous. But other than that, I still felt like he was gettable throughout the tournament. Gurney went close. The only game he was really comfortable in was the Merv King game. I thought other than that, Gurney... Um, Price never really looked like he was going to go on to win it until he hit the winning double and was, was miles ahead of Gary. So I'm going Cullen too, which really opens the door for the Premier League discussion as well. More drama. We absolutely love that here on Online Darts. Um, and with that, we need to talk about the final game of the night. The man that Joe Cullen has just said he still thinks is the best player in the world. Michael Van Gerwen makes his entrance to the tournament against Johnny Clayton. Um, Johnny beat Michael Van Gogh in here last year. But other than that, the previous five meetings on TV, the other four have all gone the way of the Green Machine. It's not the best head-to-head record at all. Um, Dan, we'll start with you. Um, MVG new darts. Does that affect the chances of him extending that record of good wins over Johnny Clayton? I mean, potentially... But it's not enough to make me seriously consider it. Like you know, the, there is the potential there. Like you know, any anyone who picks up, you know, anyone who's, who's playing with a set of new darts. I mean, I think what we sometimes think, and it's hard to, you know, we we, we say you know new darts. Um, but you know, he's not being handed them like on his way to the stage. Like you know, that, and I think that's something to bear in mind as well. Is that you know, yes, they are new darts. But he, you know, I mean, he's chucked them. Like he knows, he knows, he knows how you know he knows how they feel, and he and he, and and I, and I think that he he knows his own game. He's pretty self aware, and I think if he wasn't hundred percent happy with them, he wouldn't be using them. Um, you know, we know that. You know, if we know that if he's not comfortable, he he he, he's, he can go back and he can pick a set that he knows he, he can just he can just come to the stage with. So I don't think it's going to be much of a factor. Yeah, yeah, yes, there is a bit of potential, but I, I you know, I, I think. I think things like that, and I think mind games with Michael. We talked about him earlier on about you know Peter playing mind games. I think anybody playing mind games with him um, and getting his head is like shouting at traffic. I just think the guy's too tuned in um, to, to his own game and to what he's doing. You know, I just think you might as well go and shout at cars on the road like the, 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 than try and get in his head. I think the only person that beats him mentally is himself. Luke, last season, there was a lot of talk around the darts for, and the equipment used for MVG, and he, he said it more than once that it wasn't the darts. Obviously, his old faithfuls are starting to wear more and more now, and personally, I think that he went back to those last year for that little bit of comfort to try and defend what he had as the world number one and, and really make an assault for that title. We've got a complete new year to go ahead at and, and an assault to make on Gerwin Price. Do you think that means that he sticks with this or keeps searching for a new set throughout the rest of the year rather than go back now. This is it. They're, they're done. Put them in a nice case somewhere, frame them, put them up, celebrate all the things he achieved for them. But now he really does have to find a, a new, a completely new setup to get comfortable with, doesn't he? I think that's exactly right. I think, you know, he's got to forget what's happened now is he's lost world number one. And to be honest, I think that could be a blessing for him because this now gives him a full year Quite a few major competitions where he can just tinker all year. We obviously know the big one is the World Championships. He's just going to get himself ready for that tournament. Forget what prize money he won in the rest of the tournament, uh, the other tournaments of the year. He's just got to focus on that World Championship now because he just wants to become a four-time World Champion. The, the, the gear that he's used so far, he still hasn't perfected that completely. Obviously, we saw at the World Championships that uh, performances were good in some places against Chisnell, what not so good. He needs to get a new set. He needs to get it right. This hopefully will be the one, though, because I'd love to see him back firing on all cylinders, back to as dominant as he once was. It makes for a great 2021 if, if he's 
on the charge. Gezi's defending. Peter Wright goes back after his world title. Gary Anderson's going back at it. We've spoken about AD Lewis, Joe Cullen. I said this a lot at the start of last season, and it sort of got left behind a bit because of COVID and all the restrictions, but 2020 could have been massive for Darts. I think 2021 is even bigger. As we start to get the fans back, will the same players that had success last year keep that this year? We saw lots of new winners last year, Dimitri, Jose. Can they keep up the same level of performances and, and keep that going? It just makes for a nice mixing part of players, of people on the on the rise, people defending their positions. Ian White's in a lot of trouble we were speaking about yesterday. So an interesting dynamic for 2021. But the big four, as we have in tennis, and, and as I now think they are in darts, arrived tonight. Um, quickly, one name for the winner of this one before we wrap up the show. Luke, I'll come to you first. MVG or Johnny C? Michael Van Gerwen. Dan? MVG. I think MVG too. So we're going to go for a clean sweep, but a win for Johnny would justify me jumping shit to Gary as long as the first game goes Gary's way. If not, I'm completely dead in the water with any predictions and 2021 has started just as badly as it did for me <laughs> throughout the entire 2020. Uh, gents, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We're, we're a little about five, ten minutes later than we wanted to be. Give people a chance to go and get set up before the action starts tonight. Thank you very much to everybody who has sat and watched our show tonight and what it's got involved in the chat room. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you don't miss out on any of the interviews coming tonight. Um, and don't forget to follow us on all our other socials on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Online Darts. Scott. Can't remember his surname. Scott Mitchell is going to be on the live blog for us tonight. Don't forget to head over to the website, Online Darts, um, and follow all the action leg by leg with him, especially if you're going out tonight. A great little thing to have in your pocket. Keep that hidden from your partner. Um, gents, like I just said, thank you very much for joining us. Enjoy. Get your feet up. Enjoy the rest of the night of darts, and we will speak again at some point over this weekend. Thank you very much for watching, guys. This has been The Walk On. Have a good one. Thank you.